Hello, my dear seafaring community. We have a special guest today. He is huge, huge in the maritime industry's training and education. He's been down there, literally down there in the depths of the ocean. And he's from the land down under. Ladies and gents, Mr. Tony Noakes. Good afternoon. Welcome to Seafaring Matters, Tony. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. To start with, please tell our audience who you are and what it is that you do. Fabulous. Okay, well, I'm a training director and I run the operation for Training Centre and we've been doing that now for about seven years. Fantastic. Our talking point today is about leadership. Please tell us what does it mean to be a leader on board merchant ships? Okay, well, thank you for that. It's uh, a subject near and dear to my heart because uh, I've been teaching this now about I think about 60 or 70 classes that I've run in, in leadership training. Wow. And I think the, the biggest thing that we, we find these days with leaders is that it's not a one style fits all. Um, if we go back 200 years ago, the, the captain was God and he had the power of life and death over uh, seafarers. Uh, I'm glad to say that it has changed mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, emphasis now being put on uh, mental health and emotional well-being for our seafarers, which I think is a very good idea. Um, but that's changed the way that we have to look at leadership because you cannot be uh, an autocratic leader with very high power distance ratio um, and still be in touch with your crew. So what we're teaching is that um, they have to be eclectic and they have to try and apply the eight leadership styles uh, as required. Uh, knowing when to apply the leadership style and when not to. Beautiful. There you go. What do you think is missing from a Filipino leadership on the world? Well, um, having said that I've taught 60 or 70 courses, the biggest thing that I see is the um, art of communication. Um, the problem with it, it's a couple of sort of two edged swords here. Um, obviously, English is not the first language for a Filipino, so uh, we struggle there. Uh, one of the big things that I do see is that um, when we train in English, we get better at English and we develop more competency in the technical flow. Um, but that needs to lead on to become a leader and the art of leading is actually communication and having empathy with um, fellow seafarers and then applying it to uh, what we call these days uh, emotional intelligence uh, where we're looking at ourselves and looking at our own emotions why we get angry why we get upset learning how to self-manage and then once we're able to do that then being able to help other people do the same thing. And for me, that's the sign of a great leader. It's a person uh, that can communicate effectively and build empathy with his crew and basically have a work happy workplace. Oh, fantastic. Do you think that having that missing piece will make a Filipino leadership effective? Absolutely, truly, yes. Um, Without a doubt. And what we see uh, in our course that we run, we run a three day course, and I can, I can, you can see it on day one. The guys are, are shy. It's a Filipino cultural thing. They don't like speaking up. And when we get to the third day, I can't keep them quiet. And it's fantastic because everybody wants to communicate. And all we're pushing is um, assertive communication which is required by um, the uh, shipping industry. But the question comes back to, does a Filipino need to be more assertive? The answer to that is actually no. Mm -hmm. A Filipino has to be assertive. Because if you become more assertive, then you're going to be starting to show aggressive traits. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. The biggest thing that you really want on board in a leadership role is mutual respect. Mm -hmm. and in the Philippine culture, we tend to give respect rather than earn respect. Mm -hmm. And so while we're off-hold, off-hold and all the yeah. rest of it, um, 
when we're dealing with other cultures, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. And they're expecting to build this mutual respect. And the only way that you can do that is through trust and confidence. And I guess we need to define clearly what is assertiveness in the sense. Yeah. Well, I think assertiveness is the ability to be able to communicate in a direct, concise, and honest manner. That's all it is. It's, it's nothing, nothing rocket science about it, um, but it's designed to be direct. Mm. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and do what you say. If you do that, you're being assertive. And it's very easy to do. Um, I have cadets being assertive now, right through to captains and chief mates and chief engineers practicing their assertive skills. Um, uh, skills. But it is a skill, and as with any other skill, practice makes perfect. And if you do practice it, you become good at it, you become second nature, and you'll find yourself being a great leader. Very insightful, Tony. Oh. Thanks very much indeed. My pleasure. Trust that your message will come across continents through the seven seas. Well, I hope so. All I have to do is remember to be clear, concise, and honest. Well, thanks very much again. Stay awesome. Good luck. Thank you very much. All the very best. best. Cheers, man. Cheers. Friends must go. You used to grow, then your needs increases as you move to places. Then a new friend be unseen. And the memories remain. All the best, Tony!